Good morning. This is Haruka from Planet Education. Thank you for joining me on my Facebook Live. Today I wanted to tell you about a book I want to recommend. It is called College Match and the author is Stephen Antonoff who is a guru in the field. In fact this book which is uh, subtitled A Blueprint for Choosing the Best School for You is in its 25th edition. It just goes to show how long he's been in the business and how you know, influential this one particular book is. I like the word blueprint because it really is different from many other books uh, that you might be looking at for college admissions. And I wanna tell you uh, three reasons why. I'll just, by showing you some of the first chapters, okay? So uh, I use this, first of all, for a, uh, one of my four focus areas. The first one, which is called college major discovery. And this is important because whenever you're starting the college admission search, you have to start with a student. I believe in being student-centric. And uh, so first step is to know thyself. That's chapter one. And you need to understand that college admissions is not an event, it's a process. And you do need to do, do some kind of introspection. Um, a lot of people come in with this impression that college is a, like there's only one perfect college for them and that certain colleges are good and other colleges are bad. But we really have to stop with those self, um, like preconceived notions because in truth every school has some good and some bad there are pros and cons to every school and it really depends on that in your your individual student so the first one uh, over here is in the chapter one includes 13 myths about choosing a college so that includes colleges are either good or bad or future employers and grad schools give an edge to graduates of prestigious universities, or colleges always choose just the best students, or colleges that cost more are of higher quality, or myth number five, the more rigorous the admission standards, the higher the quality of education. So, and number eight, there's only one perfect college for me, or number nine, I'm a failure if I don't get into college X. So there's a lot of things you want to understand a little better before you start your college search. Chapter two is the self-survey for the college bound. This is great because um, it is actually a worksheet with about 80 questions, but they're quick, don't worry about it. And you are, the student is asked to either agree, disagree, and tally up all the questions. So some of the questions can be, I love learning for the sake of learning, or um, I want college to be relevant to real life, or I want, I, I have my parents remind me to complete my homework assignments. Or if a campus speaker came to talk on a topic that I'm interested in, I would attend. Uh, how about, I like a challenge, but I don't want to be academically overwhelmed in college. Um, I enjoy learning about many different subjects, history, English, math, etc. Uh, or how about I, usually initiate my own social activities. So all of these questions will help students kind of visualize what college life experience might be. And by answering, you'll be able to have a better understanding of the students on 10 different, uh, um, 10 different, uh, uh, measures. So the first one is school enthusiasm, also participant learner, affection for learning, basic academic skills, independence, career orientation, social consciousness, self-understanding, academic social balance, and eagerness for college. It's really interesting. I mean, because think about it. Let's say you have two kids. They could be your, you know, two siblings, and one can be stronger academically 
and but kind of more timid socially another another child might be maybe not as strong academically but more independent and socially confident and kind of more excited to get out of the house and and explore so you know there might be different schools that might be suitable so that each student can thrive right um, because different different things make different kids tick um, the the third chapter that I want to introduce is the one that says, what are you looking for in college? So, you know, I think a lot of kids are still very ambiguous. It's kind of fuzzy on this subject because they really haven't thought about it. And so this, this chapter provides a lot of concrete questions about what you might be looking for. And, um, and that helps, you know, to, to put things into to paper. So here are some of the questions they'll ask. They'll ask about 14 questions about the size of the school, academic environment, potential majors, financial aid, religion, ethnicity, co-ed versus single sex, student body characteristics, student life, activities include such as athletics. Do you want a big name school or a best fit school? Do you want a school that's difficult to um, be admitted? Uh, location. Uh, fitting in, there's just so many different factors that can play a role in fitting in. Let me give you just one example of what I mean by student body characteristics. Um, let's say UC Davis. This is a school that so many kids are interested in, and it is a fantastic campus, if you ask me. But actually, um, you know, if you step foot in it, some students will be marveling and, and loving the fact that it is a co college town setting in a small city like Davis, right? It's not too far from Sacramento. It's about uh, maybe less than two hours from here. And it's the biggest ag school in the UC system. So their nickname is Aggies. Some kids from the Tri-Valley area, they may think, oh my God, this is too, you know, um, this is, they may say, oh, it's glorious, it's so outdoorsy, kids are on bikes. But other kids may say, this place is out in nowhere, there are too many bugs, or this lacks an urban vibe. So it really depends on what you're looking for. Same thing with an urban school, such as UC Berkeley. Some kids may think, oh my God, look at the energy in this school. It's um, the, the feeling of social justice and so many kids interested in community service. Um, and because every school has that type of feel and you may love that, but then other kids may be like, oh, it's just way too intense. Every student looks stressed out. Um, every student is feeling like crushed by the academics or it seems like that um, or they might feel like, um, you know, so it, it really depends. You, you need to be a little bit introspective uh, about your own strengths, your own weaknesses. Um, Berkeley can be a wonderful place for different kids, but it might not be what you're envisioning. Um, some students may be, uh, may walk into a large lecture hall and think, wow, this is amazing. Look at like the thrill of seeing a famous professor giving you a lecture uh, in a room of hundreds of students. And another student may feel like, oh gosh, I just feel like a number. This, this is awful. This is not what I want. Um, the contra, the, you know, Another setting that you might be thinking about is a small discussion session. Some, some kids may think, um, you know, do you want a small group versus a lecture, right? Because if a student is the type of kid that likes to participate a lot in class, are you gonna be able to participate if a lot of your classes, especially freshman year, sophomore year, are in large uh, lecture halls? 
or do you think you'll be able to participate more in small group discussions? So there's like a plus and a minus to group sizes. And if you happen to be an introvert, some students prefer to have large groups so that you can blend in with the crowd. Whereas kids who tend to be more extroverted and want to participate, they may enjoy the stimulation of being in a small group, and be able to banter with other students and things like that. So it's all, you know, these are all questions that they're not, there's no right or wrong, but through reading and visualizing what an actual college setting might be and what the experience of being a college student is, then you may have a better chance at developing what your list of requirements are, right? Again, college is a process, it's not an event. So, and this is just a super, super book that I recommend for students, especially freshmen, sophomores, juniors, uh, who are looking to get some like step-by-step. -step. Again, this is a workbook, you know? So with lots of questions, and I, I really recommend it. If you are working with me, if you are a student of mine, then this is a required book. And we go through each chapter by chapter and do some analysis. It's a great way for me as a college counselor to get to know my students as well. If you're interested, it's available on Amazon for $18.50. It's all part of what I believe is the essential part of figuring out best fit colleges, right? Those three circles that I always talk about. There's the academic fit, the social fit, and the financial fit. This is all part of it. And I hope that you will take a moment to purchase this book and help your student figure out that path. Uh, thank you.